Welcome back to California State University Northridge's Organic Series. My name is Alex Matanona, and today we're going to go ahead and talk about distillation with and without of the grow column. So the whole point of a distillation uh, when you're using the column is essentially to separate out two liquids from each other. So for example, they use this quite a bit in petroleum processing or ethanol purification. Not that anyone would ever want to purify out, you know, pure ethanol. But, uh, you know, this is a way to actually purify out liquids. Now the concept behind it is essentially you have two liquids mixed together. When you start applying heat, the lower boiling point uh, liquid should uh, come out first. Now if you have a column, a, some sort of separation column, you'll get better separation and better purification of your liquids. So that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the equipment that we're going to need today and we will go ahead and get started. Alright, so let's take a look at the equipment that we're going to need today. The first thing is we're going to need a round bottom flask. We will also need a three-way distill head. Uh, we're going to need a glass and a rubber thermometer adapter. And if you have this in your drawer, you should also have a cap with a little o-ring for your glass uh, thermometer adapter. You'll need a stir bar, a cat clip, a water-cooled reflux condenser, a, a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. You'll need two thermometers, some latex tubing, don't get vacuum tubing, just get latex tubing. Uh, a few clamps, right here I have a micro clamp, uh, some aluminum foil, uh, a few uh, clamp holders, and then for the second part of your experiment you're going to need this Vigro column. All right, so let's see how we can put this experiment together. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and take our uh, round bottom flask with our solvent in there. Today I'm just using water, but use whatever solvent uh, you're going to be using. I'm going to put my stir bar in there. And just uh, Typically you're going to have your stir bar in there before you add your, your solution in. And then we will go ahead and put our round bottom flask, take our three-way distill head, put just the smallest amount of grease on it, just that little bit will do, and we'll go ahead and put that over the top. Now once that is attached over the top, we'll go ahead and clamp them together, make sure that it's going to hold together. And now our solution should more or less be stable. We don't have to worry about it falling, tipping over. From there, we're going to go ahead and take our glass uh, thermometer adapter. We'll go ahead and get our thermometer and we'll go ahead and attach the o-ring and put that inside of the cap we'll go ahead and squeeze that over the top and we'll close that and from here we'll go ahead and take our thermometer and gently of course with a twisting motion we'll go ahead and insert it a few centimeters into our uh, glass thermometer adapter and we're going to go ahead and attach that on top. Now the place where you want your thermometer bulb to be is about right here. So right at the neck of your three-way distill head, that's about where you want your thermometer to be. From here we're going to go ahead and take our water-cooled condenser and we're going to attach it at this joint and of course with the nozzles facing down and we're going to use this Keck clip to help secure it together. So we, we can go ahead and Keck clip the two pieces together and it should hold nicely. Okay, from here we'll take our latex tubing and we're going to have the water coming inside from the bottom nozzle. So the nozzle that's a little bit more tilted out to the side, that's where the in inlet's going to be. So we'll take our, our tubing, we'll go ahead and attach it 
as needed. So, you know, twist it on there a little bit. We'll go ahead and, you know, of course we're going to clamp this up just a little bit more to make sure it's not moving around anymore on us. We'll go ahead and run this through the back, making sure it doesn't touch our hot, hot plate. And we'll attach it to our water inlet. So depending on where your hood is, it might be on the side over this way, or it could be out in the back. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach it back here. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and take my other hose, and that will be our outlet. And I will go ahead and put that on. We'll go ahead and take the hose and run it through the back again, making sure it doesn't touch the hot, hot plate, else you might actually burn your rubber a little bit, you know, like you're going too fast. And we'll put that into the back, and that should drain. And from there, we'll go ahead and take our little uh, 10 milliliter graduated cylinder and set it where it will actually uh, be able to collect. So you might actually have to stand that up a little bit uh, by either taking um, another piece of maybe a beaker and pushing it up just a little bit so it has something to stand on. All right, and that's more or less the setup. All right, so if you'll notice, uh, now that I've actually had this running for a little bit, you can see some condensation building on the outside of this round bottom flask. So if you haven't already, you know, make sure you turn on your stir bar. It'll help get the, the liquid flowing a little bit more, better heat transfer. And we're gonna take some aluminum and we're actually gonna wrap up our piece all the way up until about right here. And the reason we're gonna do that is to essentially trap all the heat right here and allow the water to get to this point where it's gonna cool down and recondense in our water-cooled condenser that we have set up. Now, what you may want to do is actually clamp this water-cooled condenser down as well with another clamp. Um, but for now, I'm just showing you like this. So we'll go ahead and take our aluminum. We're gonna wrap it around a round bottom. Get it nice and fully covered on both sides. And again, we're only using a minimum amount of aluminum. And we're also going to go ahead and wrap the neck as well. So this might be a little hard with your clamps in the way, but you want to wrap it nice and tight all the way around. And this is about how far you want to actually go ahead and wrap it. So you want to wrap all three directions, make sure the heat is being trapped to pretty much where you can't see the thermometer. Now as your distillation progresses, what's going to happen is the temperature in your thermometer up here is going to increase. And as you actually distill out, it should reach closer and closer to the boiling point of your solvent. So for water, you know, we might see it get kind of close to 100, uh, but it might actually take a while to actually heat up that long. So that is the setup for your distillation. Now, the distillation with the Vigro column, the only difference is we're gonna go ahead and take this part out and we'll attach the big row column right here, and then the distillation head will go on top. But that's the only difference between the two setups. Now you're still gonna be monitoring the heat as it distills over. You're still gonna be collecting in your graduated cylinder. Okay, so that is it for the day. If you have any questions, feel free to ask your instructor or your lab instructor. Of course, email them, show up to office hours, or talk to them in class. Uh, from all of us here at California State University of Northridge, we uh, hope you have a good experiment. Remember, safety first, and we'll see you next time.